Rated M for Mature. The one thing that I'm usually careful about with people um, like Ray and Adam, who are incredibly skilled and creative, I give them like a tone, uh, a feeling that we're going for. Executive Game Director Todd Howard. So what happens, I'd say half the time you get something that is tonally, you know, different than what you were thinking, but even in that, there are elements that you didn't expect. So they're both very good at drawing a lot of stuff. Like even one picture has a lot of elements in it. So you might look at it and think, that's not what I was thinking at all, but what is that thing over there? What is that? What is that? Can you, hey, can you do some more of that? Or what were you thinking here? It's more like they're drawing things and they are designing the game as they draw things. It was like completely blue sky. Concept artist Adam Adamowitz. Todd said, sit down and draw a bunch of cool, weird shit, and we'll look at it and decide what's kind of worthwhile and what's really stupid, and we'll kind of take it from there. But the whole very loosely atmospheric, we want badassery Vikings versus Conan uh, classic Frank Frazetta, and it's going to be set in Skyrim, and this is a place that's going to be a lot more brutal and gritty. Draw a bunch of stuff. In the early early days of the project, I would reference Conan a lot, sort of as its universe and um, the way it treats, you know, we wanted to treat magic as something very, very special in the world. So it would feel more grounded, rugged, not clean, all of those things. It was music to my ears when, when I heard that they wanted to do, they wanted to take it a little more of a grittier direction. Concept artist Ray Letterer. Um, and I was like, cool, well, let's make it a little, my, my mantra at the time, I think from the very beginning was, uh, let's make it a little less Renfest and a little more uh, Motorhead concert. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I kind of wanted like a biker bar kind of feel. Assemble my Wes. Uh, mm, <laughs> assemble my, yeah, okay. I don't want to steal that joke. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, so a little bit more of a biker bar Viking kind of feel was, was what I, you know, hopefully we got some of that in there. So. Well, you always draw these really animated characters that, you know, you, you take one glance at the silhouette and you had that weird little goblin, he's tiptoeing with this giant lantern. You could almost hear the Warner Brothers sound effects like bing, 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 bing. <laughs> Todd looked at that, we didn't end up using that guy. No. But a lot of times for the you know the overall ideas, it, it's a very vague, all right, we, we need some seductress uh, fairy type princess that lures you to your doom in the woods. What does she look like? I have no idea. Generally, I let them I let them run wild, and then when they've run in a certain direction that either we like or don't like, we say go more in that direction and less in this direction. And, th and they're both amazingly, and pe people who look at some of this concept art, I don't think what they can appreciate, what amazes me is how fast they are. They, they can do this stuff so quickly I, and just, and, and at a high quality level, it, just, it, it boggles my mind. Welcome to the first developer diary for the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. On this episode, we go behind the scenes to meet concept artists Adam Adamowitz and Ray Letterer. Friends for years, Adam and Ray had the difficult task of conceptualizing the unique look of Skyrim, from the province's wild creatures and cultures, all the way down to what a Nord's launch might look like. As you can imagine, this was no easy task. It was, it was hard to come up with ideas for stuff with mm. all of the Lord of the Rings. Uh, well, I love Lord of the Rings. It's Gorgeous. Yeah, we all love Lord of the Rings. And so, how and do you did it? How do you beat that? That's really what. It, that's kind of yeah. what it came down to. How do you do something really cool in this genre and have it be original and not have it ape all these other things? Ray joined the project several months in, so Adam was responsible for handling many of the early conceptual sketches. Lead artist Matt Carafano. Adam had some really good ideas uh, for what the ancient Nords looked like. That was some of the starting ground, I think, for how the whole game looked. We spent. Uh, oof. I think there's some of this in the art book, but Eve, it's only 10% of it. We wanted to find, um, you know, the ancient Nordic culture. So what do the Nordic ruins look like? Because you've seen so many different ruins in so many games. And, oh, my gosh, we went through so many iterations. And, like, how did they build these things? And, like, okay. And, and the idea was it's epic reality. So when you see the pyramids, uh, you know, what do you think of them now looking at them? Like, wow, that is really impressive. But then go back in time. How did they even build that? 
coming up with what Draugr were and what Nords were like in the past really helped us figure things out. What the ruins looked like, what their their patterns looked like. You know, I wanted to base things off of a lot of, you know, Neolithic stonework, and he had the idea of kind of making the burial tombs look like dragon rib cages. And there was one he drew where it kind of encompassed the A-frame Nordic thing, but with stone, while forming the spine of like a dragon on a mountain. And there's a, he did it as a sketch, and it was like, bam, oh man, that is it. And then he did a, well, let me, oh, I'll flesh that out as a painting and still one of my favorite images. Um, and it's been released. You, you've seen it. Um, but it's super unique. And, and, and they're both, both Ray and Adam, very good at storytelling. And, oh, here's the pit where they would bring the, they would worship the dragon and then they'd put the, the people in here and this is where we'd eat it. And um, all of those things uh, made it into the game. You know, all you take, just that inch of not being immersed or having a Dixie cup sitting on the table that's supposed to be, you know, King Hrothgar's high hall, and then, you know, all of a sudden here's this weird modern artifact in there. It can kind of blow the whole thing. It's pretty mentally taxing. You sit in there and someone says, draw a table, and you're like, oh, for the love of God, it's this flat surface with four legs. Can, <laughs> can I draw, like, a giant goblin, you know, vomiting smaller goblins? Or yeah. <laughs> The, the, the meat. The meat. Oh, the meat. <laughs> the What's meat. The meat was the... Uh, that was the... One of the most difficult concept art tasks uh, I've ever seen anyone saddled with yeah. and made very, very cool, and it's become, I think, Ray's legacy. Well, Todd, the yeah, Todd legacy. made sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reinforcing it. I would go by every so often, less and less as the project goes on. Like, early on, I'm, I'm very much with them a lot, uh, with, with, with some of the other guys. And as the project goes on, uh, Matt Carafano has a number of things he needs them to draw that, you know, we're, we're just cranking out assets. So I don't get too in tune with, like, all of the assets, but I'll, I'll come by every so often and, and see what they're drawing. And I came by, and, and, and Ray is just drawing meat. I'm like, why are you drawing meat? He's like, well, Matt wants me to draw meat. We need to draw all the meat. And so it's like, well, we got to have accurate representations of what these things are. It can't just be photographs. So it's got to be concept art. So I was like, all right, well, I'll draw some meat. And I was like, we know what, people know what meat looks like. Why don't you draw shit we don't know what it looks like? Like, you know, here's my list of stuff that I have no idea what it looks like. And, and, and they were all set on, look, this is important. And I think my line was, this is a serious misuse of, milit of art artistic manpower right here. <laughs> so how do we draw mammoth meat? Oh, let's see. What do they have? Let's see. If I were in the field and I was, was going to kill a mammoth, uh, the giants are always hurting. They're like the shepherds of the mammoth. So if there's a giant chasing me after I just killed his mammoth, the first thing I'm going to go for is I'm going to chop that trunk right off <laughs> and throw it in my satchel and run. <laughs> so now we have this really obscene looking phallus thing that you... I think it's a Nord sippy straw. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's full of cheese. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very pack of full of cheese. Yeah. <laughs> so there's this concept image of all of these pieces of meat, and it started becoming our joke. If, if I wanted a picture of something and we didn't have it, I, you know, it would be, well, I'm glad we have that picture of meat. <laughs> and it's still hanging up. We were going to blow it up as a big poster. It has, like, horker meat and the, like, mammoth snout. And the horker meat, uh, you know, is another. Uh, I think oh, plenty should... of whiskers in that one. Yeah, they, they would. They would. You'd use those for toothpicks. Sure. But I think as a 7-Eleven late night snack, it should be shrink wrapped. Yeah. With, a, with some sort of a Skyrim, like I don't know if they smoke cigarettes, but. Um... <laughs> the end result was good. While he was working on it, I did throw like a little fit. Why is Ray drawing meat? You know, draw like exotic artif Daedric artifacts from beyond time or something like. You're drawing a steak. <laughs> is, that, is, is that why you're here? But, yeah, I was proven wrong. I think that Ray's personal weirdness and my personal weirdness, because we've known each other for <laughs> like 11, 15, how many beers right. later? There's definitely some eclectic tastes, I think, for, um, you know, what's boring and cliched about fantasy. Ray was talking about, yeah, Moby Dick. I've been reading that. It's awesome. It reads like a fantasy book. Mm -hmm, we were mm -hmm. talking about... It is like a fantasy book. Classical literature is a uh, 
inspiration. If you look at classical literature or art or anything else, I mean, most art that you see, especially religious art, which is most of it, I guess, uh, it's all fantasy art in a way, you know? It's all fantastical and... Seraphim. Yeah, it's great. Demons. So, that's what makes it interesting. That's why people like it. So hopefully we're mining some of that. Yeah, James Gurney, our favorite artist, you know, um, the Dinotopia guy. His line, I prefer my, I prefer my art heroes dead. Mm -hmm. And his point being, you know, you pick something that's 200 years old, chances are it's got some merit to it. Thinking about how, uh, how the environment itself kind of shapes the culture. And, uh, you know, and, and trying, to, trying to incorporate that stuff in there, you know, while simultaneously creating our own culture rather than just ripping off, you know, real Scandinavian culture, right? So we want to come up with our own symbology and our own um, look to uh, even like stones and rocks and trees and whatever, you know? Um, yeah, you try to figure out a way to make those things original, you know, if you just like, all right, come up with a, you know, whatever, a bear, you know? A squid bear? A squid bear, perhaps, yeah. yes. Yes, and I'm glad that some people actually got it, you know, because most people thought it was just a bear and a mammoth and a guy in a scene, but, <laughs> a few people really got what I was going for, and they saw the vision I had, which pleased me to no end. <laughs> it wasn't a compositional mistake at all, it was, actually. You see the t-shirts, right? Uh, I saw one guy, yeah, who's the guy in the, 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 the Destructoid, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought that was really sweet. I thought that was really cool. I'm like, hey, You've thanks. You've arrived. I've arrived. I felt like, uh, man, awesome. any attention is good attention, I suppose, and, and I, uh, you know, I, I you know, I, I have to admit, I felt a little, uh, oh, God, i got to go back and change that picture um, at first. But then I'm like, ah, screw it. That's fun. You know? It's a Squidbarian. Piece. Yeah, the Squidbarian enclave will meet secretly in the yes. bunker. Yes. Uh, in their mom's <laughs> basement. <laughs> this, is, this is that DLC proposal, right? It's the DLC proposal. There will be, there, you've heard it here first, there will be squid bears. Say, fair damsel, would you care to come back to I'll leave that to the modders. long house to view my squid bear etchings? <laughs> <laughs> I think between Ray and I, we always try to add any kind of extra embellishments because it always gets used at some point or another. There's a level designer who's run out of ideas, and it's hard to come up with ideas when you're sitting behind a piece of, um, you know, 3D modeling programming. All right, you've got all these tools in front of you, and I know from personal experience, your mind hits a complete blank. So when you have a folder of ideas to pick from, uh, we have all these. Uh, Ray and I both just massive amounts of thumbnails that people can leave through while they're building a dungeon. And it really does make a difference to fleshing out the last part of that last wooden bowl and where it's sitting. So that when you look at a room, you can say, oh, you know, before these people got killed by foam, or they got killed by foam, or look, those, you know, the bowls are knocked over, and there's a splash of blood on the curtains. And, uh, you know, again, God is in the details, I guess. And then, of course, with the level designers, they take it to the nth degree. They run completely with the ideas. Ray and I couldn't draw enough. I mean, oh, there's God. entire cities yeah. that you and I both feel guilty still, like, oh, crap, we really should be drawn. You know, like, that, you know, the, I missed a couple of houses in there. I can't believe I didn't draw that. Yeah. Um, but the level designers are definitely it's artists amazing. in their own rights. It's am yeah, it's amazing how much they ran with so little information. I mean, we, you know, we did the, I think we did the best we could at the time, but, I mean, there's so much more than what we drew that they did that's just so amazing, you know. Really cool stuff. So what's that like, kind of seeing the realization of everything that you put in, oh you know, created? It's like Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. It's so cool to see all that stuff come together, and, it's, and what's really amazing is just how much further they take it and how much cooler it is than I feel like I drew, you know? It's just, it's awesome. Yeah, I almost can't take credit for it at a certain point. Yeah. Even looking at the, um, you know, the Alduin uh, especially the props that were made for the trade show. And I think of, you know, I did a brief foray into prop making and you get paid seven dollars an hour to get screamed at while you have a hot glue gun in your hand and the Alduin they built is just massive. So for me, even drawing, just doing the drawing of it and then looking at, you know, people rigging it, uh, Gary's rigging it and Jonah is doing the, um, you know, the ZBrush passes on that and I, I think it's like, I'm, I'm, 
I can't watch televised sports because they bore me, but the football analogy, everyone carries it across the finish line. Grinder trap, that was one of the things that I posited to one of our level designers. It's kind of like a, a Cuisinart or, or a disposal on a sink, specifically made for grinding up elves <laughs> into a fine purple <laughs> glittery powder. Yeah. Because they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> the elfometer, I was going to make an elfometer too. I wanted to do a bar scene with a Viking just punching out of an elf, and then everyone, it's the entire crowd, they're just cheering the entire bar. It's like, yeah! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha